The Basement Dwellers Podcast is brought to you by Player One Coffee. At Player One Coffee, we're obsessed with gaming, coffee, and, well, gaming. Every one of our signature roasts is handcrafted and tasty as Get yours at PlayerOneCoffee.com. Plus, order your Player One Coffee through our affiliate link, and not only will you receive 5% off of your first order, you'll also help support our show in the process. Press start to continue. They are those who live in the shadows, who feed upon Doritos and Mountain Dew. They take comfort in their dark habitats as they watch reruns of sci-fi shows long past. They are the Basement Dwellers. Show me what you got. So say we all. So say we all. So say we all. So say we all. Indeed. Yes. This is a fertile land and we will thrive. We will rule over all this land and we will call it this land. I guess so. Together, you can move a galaxy far from sun. I want to believe. We better get back, because it'll be dark soon, and they mostly come at night. Mostly. Hey people, and welcome back to The Basement Dwellers, a bi-weekly podcast dedicated to all activities most enjoyed by those who spend their time in the deepest, darkest, and dankest of basements everywhere. I'm your host, Wes Tanner, and this is our 10th episode. Tonight's show is going to be uh, primarily an educational show, as we have a special guest with us that will be talking to us about cryptocurrency. But first, we're going to hit up some nerdy news, followed by a presentation on a new social media alternative called Steemit, and then we'll end the night learning about digital moolah. Uh, I'm joined, as always, by my fellow basement dwellers. Oh, God, there's more of you now. My list has increased. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ethan Tucci, uh, Lauren Peterson, and our special guest, Eric. What's up, guys? Hey. Um, Hello. Word. Ethan, you want to you wanna tell everybody about the beer that we're making? Oh, yeah, we're making beer, everyone. Actually, I guess we haven't really yeah. said that on the show yet, have we? Yeah, no, we haven't. We are making an official Basement Dwellers beer. Yep. Our first official beer, anyways. The TBD Crew Basement Brew. <laughs> yes. Honor of our dear friend Tucci here. Hey. It's going to be... It's going to be a coffee stout. Yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. And it, and we are going to use coffee in it from our sponsor. Da, da, da. Do, do, do. And it's also going to have like aromas of Tucci's body sweat, isn't it? <laughs> well, if he bathes in it like he talked. <laughs> yeah, if I, if I bathe in it. And it, it, it'll have a nice scent of like a, a, uh, a chicken noodle soup. What? So that'll be good. <laughs> Underlying Italian flavors. A taste of ramen and flop sweat. Oh god. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, be really creamy. <laughs> lava lamps in despair. Lava lamps, yeah. We'll call it Tucci's lava lamp. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, more specifically, um, we're using player one coffee. We're using their medium roast, uh, which is God's Gift to Gamers. That's what the name of it is. Um, the description from their website says God's Gift to Gamers, which is a boldly balanced Guatemalan brew bestowed upon gamers from the heavens with a buttery texture and a chocolate nuance. So I'm guessing that that is going to add some pretty cool flavors to our uh, our coffee stout. So yeah, we'll keep everyone updated as far as that goes. Now it's time to see what's up in the world of nerdy news. First up, via Polygon, uh, Black Panther sets box office record with estimated $202 million opening weekend. 
Disney and Marvel Studios' Black Panther set a box office record this weekend. It's the biggest February debut ever. Black Panther made $201.7 million through Sunday in North America, according to Disney's latest estimates. The film premiered Friday, February 16th, although the figures also include Thursday night screenings. The success makes Black Panther the fifth largest movie opening of all time, just behind other Disney properties like The Avengers, Star Wars The Force Awakens, and Star Wars The Last Jedi. Black Panther's debut also beat out 20th Century Fox's Deadpool for the biggest opening in February. Deadpool pulled in $132 million domestically when it debuted in 2016. Disney is expecting Black Panther to generate around $235 million domestically over the four-day weekend, including President's Day. I guess that was already happened, but uh, Deadpool's four-day total was $152.2 million. Has anyone here seen that yet? Have not. I wish Nick was here, because I know he just saw it too, and he said it was great. Yeah, I wanted to see it this past weekend, but you know, like with the weather and all. Yeah, um, yeah, weather's been pretty terrible lately. We just had ice all day today well, in uh, KC. We just had uh, pretty much near 60, 60 degree weather and rain today. Yeah, so. almost 60 and <laughs> rain. I'm yeah. um, going to say this, and the only time I'm probably ever going to say this, I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, jealous of Michigan weather. Yeah, yeah. You. Yeah, not many people are. It um, won't last. <laughs> all right. Well, we'll uh, save our talk about my, my, Black my roommate next said time. it was a good movie. Okay. Uh, yeah. So Tucci, he, he said Tucci, it was a good movie. Tucci's roommate gave the endorsement. Everybody heard it here. <laughs> so. Yeah, he said, he, said the, he, he likes he likes the album better than the movie, but the movie was still good. Is is what he actually said. The what? The album, like the the soundtrack to the to the movie. Oh, oh, really? Yeah, the soundtracks. Yeah, he I said he like, loves the soundtrack. I was like, this wait a second. This movie was based loosely off of a record. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I got confused for a second. Yeah. Uh, so, uh... <laughs> so uh, next on, do we need more reboots? News via Gamespot. The Transformers franchise movies are uh, are set to be completely rebooted. Uh, I guess. Uh, uh, <laughs> all right. So although the Transformers franchise has proven to be a hugely popular one, uh, 2017's The Last Night was the least successful film by some distance, suggesting that audience interest in the series might be fading. Hmm. The spinoff, mm. Bumblebee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The spinoff, Bumblebee, is due out later this year, but a new report states that beyond that, Paramount is planning to reboot the whole series. Uh, okay. As reported by Transformer World, toy manufacturer Hasbro confirmed at the company's Toy Fair 2018 investor preview that the series will be entirely reset. In addition, a new agreement with Paramount means that Hasbro will have greater control over the property, including greenlighting movie projects. The site also reports that no Transformers movies beyond Bumblebee remain on Paramount's release schedule. So maybe they'll reboot it into something more like the original Transformers? Well, who knows? Maybe. <laughs> with all the know. with all the many Transformers in it? Didn't didn't Hasbro like have their hand in making the Battleship movie? <laughs> If so, I quit. I was saying, did you guys, you guys probably don't even know what I'm talking about, do you? <laughs> yeah, yes, I do. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> well. Bat- you sunk my battleship with aliens. <laughs> yeah. uh, so to wrap up that one, uh, this is something of a change in fortune for the series. In October 2015, Hasbro announced that there would be at least four more movies and that a writer's room had been established to map out the next decade of Transformers across movies, oh, Lord. TV, and digital. <laughs> Following this, Paramount confirmed that Transformers 6 would arrive in 2019, which seems to be no longer the case. Uh, Bumblebee, however, I had never heard heard about this uh bumblebee hits theaters on december 21st 2018 and stars Haley steinfield and john cena yeah they should do beast wars really that would be better <laughs> yeah um next up in sure i guess why not news via i fucking love science <laughs> Woman's, I love that webpage. Yeah, woman sues California for not recognizing Bigfoot as a species. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, God. When things have gone too far, it's time to stop. Okay, people? So, Claudia Ackley, a resident in Crestline, California, says she, quote, ran into a Sasquatch. 
last March on a trail in Lake Arrowhead. Her and her daughters say they saw Bigfoot 30 feet up a tree, extremely close to them, and even managed to film the encounter. That could have just been my hairy friend Zangi, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> he they looked- stole his wallet and found his cryptid currency. <laughs> he looked like Sorry. a Neanderthal man with hair all over him. He had solid black eyes. He told, or uh, she told, the San Bernardino son. Uh, he had no expression on his face at all. He did not show his teeth. He just stared at the three of us. Ackley dialed 911 to inform the authorities about the Sasquatch ABC News reports, but they didn't believe her. Shocking. <laughs> After reviewing the footage, she was so sure that the creature she saw was a Bigfoot, she showed it to Todd Standing, who created the Netflix series Discovering Bigfoot. At first, he was skeptical, but after visiting the area and reviewing the footage, he was convinced enough to, uh, enough to help her sue the California Department of Fish and Wildlife and the Natural Resources Agency in order to seek protection for the species. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> the, the well, like, like, what are you gonna do with that I money? Like, like, what are you like... getting out of this? Yeah, I didn't. Know. The uh, like fund more documentaries, I guess. Uh, I don't yeah, know. I'm sure. I, I want to believe, but uh, the lawsuit filed in January alleges that the organizations are in derelict of their duty for not protecting the Sasquatch's territory, as well as damaging like the reputation. Yeah, as well as damaging the <laughs> reputation and public image of researchers who study the Sasquatch. Man, I didn't know uh, Chewbacca was a real thing. Now I'm now Squatch, I'm pretty watch. excited. How dare you Squatch, suggest watch. otherwise? <laughs> 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 Moving on to some really cool ancient Egypt news via science alert. Uh, an archaeologist says he's figured out the secret of the pyramid's peculiar alignment. This one's a little long here, so bear with me. Is uh, it just a Ryan um, spell? Um, here, I'll get to it. Oh, Way to okay. ruin it, Tucci. Yeah, spoiler alert. <laughs> Spoilers. Quit guessing, God damn it. Uh, for centuries, the pyramids of Giza have puzzled researchers, not just their mysterious voids and hidden chambers, but exactly how ancient Egyptians built such impressive structures without modern technology. Although it's slightly lopsided, overall, the square sides of the 138.8 meter or 455 foot uh, Great Pyramid of Giza, also known as the Great Pyramid of Khufu, are pretty damn straight and aligned almost perfectly along the cardinal points north, south, east, and west. The builders of the Great Pyramid of Khufu aligned the Great Monument to the cardinal points with an accuracy of better than four minutes of arc, or one-fifteenth of one degree. Uh, it was a quote from archaeologist and engineer Glenn Dash in his new paper that was published in the Journal of Ancient Egyptian Architecture. In fact, all three of the largest Egyptian pyramids, two at Giza and one at uh, Dashur, um, are remarkably aligned in a way you wouldn't expect to see from an era without drones, blueprints, or computers. Uh, all three pyramids exhibit the same manner of error. They are rotated slightly counterclockwise from the cardinal points. Um, while many hypotheses exist as to how they did this, using the pole star to align the pyramids or the sun's shadow, no one has been able to nail down exactly how these worked. Now, Dash has another simpler idea. His latest research or suggests that the Egyptians roughly 4,500 years ago could have used the, um, I guess, autumnal, autumnal equinox. God, I can't talk. <laughs> Nothing new um, to achieve perfect alignment. Uh, while we might never know what really happened or how they did it, this new paper makes an interesting point that something as simple as mapping shadows during the fall equinox could have been sophisticated enough to align some of humanity's most recognizable our ancient. I almost said alien, uh, I guess Freudian slip maybe, <laughs> but their most recognizable ancient structures. So basically, that long-winded post was about using uh, using shadows to align the uh, the pyramids, which um, you'd have to read the article because they kind of diagram it out, but it was actually really cool, like a really simple explanation that uh, apparently hasn't come out until now. So that here's was cool. my uninformed opinion on what they did. Oh, the I don't even good. know if compasses <laughs> win. Yeah, I don't even know if compasses were a thing back then. Uh -huh. But maybe, maybe they aligned it to the true pole, like the uh, the magnetic pole, and since the magnetic pole is shifted. Hmm. <laughs> well, from the from the diagram, it looked like it was uh, just more of like a sundial type deal with a pin in the middle. Um, and well, that's it, boring. Yeah, I know. But but anyway, <laughs> uh, 
And last but not least, in I can't believe I'm talking about this news, uh, via comicbook.com, Sharknado 6 is being made and will deal with time travel. <laughs> Oh my god. Because what else are you going to do at this point with Sharknados? Yeah. The Sharknado series has featured all manner of ridiculous elements, with the sixth film set to take the series in an all-new direction with the incorporation of time travel. A new synopsis out of the European film market has confirmed the absurdity that will be on display. (laughs) All is lost, or is it? Finn, I guess this is a character in the show, (laughs) or in the movie. Finn unlocks the time-traveling power of the Sharknados in order to save the world and resurrect his family. The synopsis reads, In his quest, Finn fights Nazis, dinosaurs, knights, and even takes a ride on Noah's Ark. (laughs) This time, it's not about how to stop the Sharknados, it's when. (laughs) Well, I've got to be honest. Absurdity was a great word for that. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I can't say as I've been sober for any of them yet, but... uh... (laughs) They go over really great at our Shark Night parties. Uh, you've I'm actually sure. watched them? Oh yeah. <laughs> did did oh, they really? actually did they actually make five of them, or did they just skip a couple? Oh, oh no, there's five of them. <laughs> That'd be funny. <laughs> they make one and Dude, two. They've and got Hasselhoff in them. They've got the Hoff man. The Hoff oh. man. Um. So anyway, <laughs> with that, uh, <laughs> with <laughs> with that piece of. Uh, fantastic news we're going to go ahead and take our first commercial break and then when we get back we're going to turn things over to our guest eric who's going to tell us about a new social media platform um which is uh gaining steam <laughs> get it um, Ooh, so, wow. uh, so we'll I be back just cringed we, yeah yep. thank you we will be back momentarily hey you nerd have you subscribed to the show yet now you can find the basement dwellers podcast on the following platforms iTunes, Google Play, Podbean, and SoundCloud. Also, make sure to like our Facebook page where you can stay up to date on all the things. And now, back to the show. And we're back, and we have Eric with us tonight who is going to be introducing us all to uh, a new social media platform um, and I guess there's quite a few different facets to it, but uh, it's called Steam It. So, Eric, I guess the most basic question I can get to start this conversation off is, uh, what the fuck is Steam It? Uh, Steam It is a social media platform built on a blockchain that rewards its users uh, by per- by uh, both creating and curating content on its platform. What exactly does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> English, please. Yeah, we're uh, we're oh, oh yeah. As a uh, for for reference here, most of us are starting with a very a basic, if not uh, completely uh, void knowledge of um, uh, cryptocurrency and everything like that, which we're going to get to in our later segment. But for now, <laughs> we're bad nerds. Yeah, bad, bad nerds. You have to understand, we're kind of an echo chamber with yeah. uh, uh, people that are involved in Steemit. Uh-huh. Uh, usually have a, uh, a, a cryptocurrency background. Okay. So um, that is, uh, that's definitely something, that's an, that's a thing. So a lot of times we kind of get in an echo chamber of we're not used to talking people to people that aren't familiar with the blockchain, <laughs> how, yeah. how all that stuff works. Uh-huh. Well, that's like all the, the shit that we talk about if we were to talk to somebody who was like, I don't know, like into sports or normal shit, like they probably wouldn't know what the hell we're talking about either, so... Right. I mean, we, uh, we, we get inside our own little personal bubble, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, um, so, uh, with, with the blockchain cryptocurrency that's on the blockchain, um, I mean, let's just make it super simple Mm -hmm. for now. We'll get a little deeper in later, but, uh, it's just an open ledger and people are confirming, you know, kind of like a notary. There's just multiple notaries on each transaction. It creates a super secure and uh, strong foundation of information. As you know, I can't give you I can't give you five air dollars without having five air dollars to give you, and that's where the blockchain would confirm. Hey, he doesn't have five air dollars to give. You know, there wasn't a creation of five air dollars, so nobody can give five air dollars. Okay. Um, so, so rather than being a ledger that's locked away on a secure network, it's uh, it's uh, completely open source, completely out there, uh, completely public. 
and uh, when when two computers interact with each other, they're uh, they're given the information of the blockchain to each other. Okay. So there's there, the blockchain is out there. It's out. It's out in the in the you know the internet sphere, in in the webs the interwebs, and uh, you it, it's you know they're all the same if that makes sense. So it's it's out there to everybody. So it's just a, a way to uh, to validate transactions between two people. Then I take it, like the strip down. Yeah, version. I mean summed up absolutely. Okay. Yeah, and then and then it's the uh, the security of that and the foundation from from that's created, um, and then you can start trade around tokens on that blockchain and uh it has a value in a way that a lot of other uh currencies don't have so so it kind of works like like for layman like myself um it kind of works like if i want to buy wes's beard from him <laughs> right then i wait my, I go be- this- my beard or my beer your, your beard oh my yes, beard okay. with, with a d with okay. a d yeah <laughs> um so if i want to buy wes's beard i basically say hey wes i want to buy your beard and then I say that loud enough for multiple people to hear me and they all take note of that. Is that kind of how that works? Yeah, and then, you know, say you, uh, you you do the transaction and you have five witnesses that saw the transaction happen and they're, they're all, you know, authenticating it. And now I they're, have Wes's beard, okay. Yeah, cool. <laughs> it's yours. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, in reality, you guys are really kind of bridging the gap for me, you know, like, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a great analogy as, as far as how that is. Okay. Awesome. Um, so, what what does that have to do with with Steam? It like the uh, we got like kind of a foundation of what what it runs on. I'm assuming that that refers to how when you mentioned that it rewards content creators, that's how they do it. Yeah. Okay. And uh, uh, let me let me just quickly get mining with the mining. The, uh, they're running the uh, running the mathematical equations. You know, I'll spare you the techie stuff, but uh, for mining it, they're basically keeping the uh, the network going. Whereas right now, if you want to run the Visa network, you know, you got to access it through a, a third party merchant at the gas station. They mm-hmm. they settled the, the transactions with Visa and whatnot. Well, here with the uh, the cryptocurrency with with the Steam at blockchain. Um, there's there's different nodes of people mining that and basically just keeping the transactions, AK, you know, the information being sent around. They're keeping track of it. They're keeping the system running. Okay. And instead of uh, instead of just getting steam for that, they uh, they're basically creating the uh, creating the steam to give out. And oh, okay. um, and that's more of what they call a proof of brain in some of the mining. It's called proof of stake, but in this, it's proof of a proof of brain. Basically, when you create content and other people upvote it, they're they're putting value on that account. They're putting value on what you did. Part being part of the network, you get part of the network's creation of of you know part of the steam that's created. Oh. You know, it, it, it's it's spread out. So, so if it, I join now, I get some steam. Well. Uh, yeah, how, how it works um, right now, you sign up and it takes two to four days because I have to manually add it to the blockchain. They're going to work on an easier onboarding process, but right now they're not in a hurry to do it because um, they just want to test the scalability to make sure that, you know, work out all the kinks before they try to make it go mainstream. Gotcha. And uh, so they're not in a hurry to, and, and, and with the rewards, they're worried about spam and that the, yeah. the, the couple days kind of holds off on the spam there. Yeah. It d- kind of deters the people who just make a quick account. Right. So you sign up, you wait like the four days, I believe you get uh, last I checked like half a steam, which steams worth about $4 right now. So you get about $2 worth. But when you, when you sign up your votes worth roughly a penny, your votes worth roughly a penny, a hair less, just depending on the steam price. And part of that power is delegated to you because how the how the system, the reward system works, the more the more steam that you have locked away in your wallet, the more your upvotes are worth. Because you're kind of staked at that point. You're staked because you put it into this quote unquote savings account to where you can't get it all. You know, you lock it away, and if you lock it away. It's uh, it's called steam power, 
and that's part of your your voting power. Okay, so let me let me try and uh, translate this real quick. So what you're saying is that it's kind of like you are generating value for a company, which would be Steam it. And the more value that you generate, the more your influence is worth. So when you upvote somebody else, you are basically saying, hey, I'm a valuable member here. I think this is valuable. And then it kind of goes from there. Yeah, you, you're bringing value to the platform. And and it's uh, there is a Steam it Inc., um, but I believe that's pretty much just comprised of, uh, of some of the founding people, you know, that, yeah. that have, have quite a bit of steam and they're just, uh, they're doing it to help finance itself to, to, uh, build the infrastructure of it and, and to, you know, and it, it's working, but so you have the, the, I believe, and, and somebody correct me if I'm wrong, you know, maybe not anybody here, but if, uh, anybody maybe on my stream, um, just that there's a group of the founders and then from there the people that run the nodes that uh uh that are mining they're called witnesses and there's basically like a democratically held uh thing where they they vote for the the witnesses and things of that nature and they're the ones that kind of help make the decisions and everything on steam it so how i mean essentially when you use steam it you're a partial member if you have any steam power locked away you are a partial owner of steam it um okay. so it's in it's in your best interest for you know for the value of the of this of steam to go up and with the steam it you know it's it's rewarding you for bringing value to the platform okay so we we are we are uh, we're going uh pretty in depth with the the economics underneath like the the uh what's running under the hood of steam it but on the surface for people who maybe aren't as interested in this kind of stuff. Um, I am, but uh, uh, for people who aren't, who want to know like what, what's, what do you do on Steemit? Like what, what is Steemit and how does it compare to other social networks, I guess? Okay, now the beauty of Steemit is it's, it's the foundation, it's a blank canvas, okay? It's uh-huh. basically what people want to make about it. With, with decentralization, um, you know, from, from a philosophical standpoint, I'm a really big, uh, uh, I, I cheer for decentralization. Okay, so um, basically, Steam it puts it out there for you to do, you know, whatever you want with it. And what people did was create platforms on top of Steam it. Steam it's like the dumping ground for all the input. Okay, it's it's the center point. It's where they all all your all your stuff that comes off of Steam it is rooted in your steam at post. That's the addition of the blockchain. Okay. Okay. That's the hardwired thing. Everything that goes off of that, um, there's uh, there's D Live, which is a uh, streaming service. They also have video uploads. Uh, D Tube, which is a decentralized YouTube, um, that's linked to the Steam blockchain. Um, you have like D Mania, which is uh, for for videos and memes and you know things of that. You know the sillier stuff goes there um utopian.io which some of you may be pretty interested in this is basically a platform to um have ideas uh build a team um for for programmers you can uh, you can find projects where people are looking for uh you know programmers or coders or to do this or do that do little projects or be a part of a team um and you can get rewarded in steam for for doing certain things <laughs> The greater accomplishment you get, you know, you may get a lot of other people that upvote you doing that. Okay, man, this is like this is uh, like complex, but in a good way. Like, <laughs> oh, there's there's definitely a learning curve, definitely yeah. a learning curve, and and it's it's important, and and I believe it's very important to to set expectations correctly with Steemit. Uh huh. It's not it's not a it's not a get rich quick scheme or anything like that. No, it, it never is, right? Yeah, no. You know, it's the amount of work. But this isn't a pyramid scheme. You know what I mean? It's it's not like, oh, look, I need you guys to get in here to get under me, and then you upvote my stuff, and then I'll, I'll you know, do some trickle-down economics for you. And, <laughs> and, you know, it's, but, it's, it's well, nothing like that. What, what if I want to do that, though? Like, what if I want you... <laughs> then you get on virtual Amway. Yeah. Virtual- Chuchi so- wants you to trickle on him, okay? Yeah, so- I want you to <laughs> trickle all over me, baby. 
pour some <laughs> trickle on me <laughs> you know all that stuff yeah oh, <laughs> yeah no i mean if you want to i mean we can talk about it later <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, crypto showers. <laughs> crypto showers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I so, did just sign up for Steam, so we'll see how it goes. So, so to uh, um, to kind of to kind of break it down any further, um, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but from my understanding, Steam at the platform is kind of like the engine that um all these different uh services run on, but it. Am I correct in assuming it's kind of like Facebook where you like you may, you can make posts on Steam it and that's part of that? Because I know there's the, the D Live, which I'm assuming is kind of like Facebook Live or Twitch even. And then yep. you said there was D, D Tube, which is like YouTube. Oh, and D Sound. I forgot about I have to mention D Sound. That's uh, that's audio, an audio platform. OK, like streaming or just like an archived uh, um, like archive of files or. Yeah, yeah archive kind of like soundcloud that we're on yep okay so we could All post right. the podcast there you can done done yeah. done <laughs> well that, that, yep our our, uh, our listening uh joe just asked a pretty decent question in general uh he asks uh there has been an issue lately with advertisements on websites running cryptocurrency mining code while you visit said web websites do I need to worry about Steam at running mining software on my computer via their website code? No, you do not. The witnesses for Steam it run the nodes. They have no need to to do that. They they run the platform off of their servers, and uh, they have no. There's no benefit to them to for on the Steam it platform to do that. So okay, real real quick along those same lines then, because you said that the um, the witnesses you called them they're somewhat like like elected right yes okay so and this may be getting a little more political than i i I feel up to so we can just leave it at this but it would they be kind of acting as like the uh the federal reserve except we can vote them out or people can vote them out little little devil's advocate for you yeah no uh with with um with cryptocurrency every time some uh a coin Somebody has the intention of making a coin. They call. Uh, they put out what's called white pages or the white paper. Basically, they're they're breaking it down for the what's called the emissions, and that's at the rate of the uh, the the crypto that's going to be put out. So um, there's a set mathematical equation, so you know exactly what's going to be taken out. And yes, yeah. well, that's how it is. You know, as as far as anybody's concerned, it would take a pretty big act. For anybody to change anything that's that's in there unless it's like completely uh look to save this platform we we may have to curb this this way but it's in everybody's best interest to do something that's in the best interest of the coin so essentially what steam is is a is a platform where you it rewards creators because the creators are in turn helping promote steam it not so much in a uh, um, like a marketing way but more they're just help keeping it active and the more people that become involved um the more people like it becomes it, it grows the economy a little bit am i correct in, yeah. in saying that yeah the economy will steam it yeah and okay. um and and they obviously that wouldn't stand if it was creators only right i mean y- yeah if everybody's yep. like everybody's everybody's making videos be like hey bro check out my video i can't go i'm working on my video you know what i mean if if you know, if that's the only uh, the only people that are consuming the content, that's not very self-sustaining. Yeah, yeah, so, definitely. Um, that's something that I've been pushing a lot lately is, you know, uh, setting up our expectations to not, you know, tell everybody, hey, you can get out of here and, and get rich. It's, yeah, you know, hey, this is a good platform to check stuff out. Check out these streamers. Check out these guys making videos. <laughs> check out these bloggers. You know, that's that's a very good starting point when talking about Steam. Uh, there is a lot of quality content on there. You know, there is yeah. because everybody's stepping up their game. You know, everybody, uh, you know, you have people who never thought of blogging, blogging. You, you have people that have never thought about streaming on there. People that have never thought about uh, mixing music, uploading music on there. Um, you know, they're... they're it's growing more and more and it's really a a situation where there's something for everybody you know maybe you're not a blogger but you're you're into programming you know 
Uh, maybe you're not a streamer, but you like doing videos. You know, there's just something for everybody. Uh, you find your niche, and uh, if you if if you want to just do it casually, post it here and there. You know, yeah, whatever. Uh, but if you want to take it seriously and really manage your your social presence on there and juggle that around, you know, it's uh, it can be lucrative. So. Um, along those lines, we got two questions in our in our uh, text chat right now. Um, the first one is <laughs> again from Joe listening in. Uh, how do I turn Steam into uh, money? I'm assuming U.S. currency that I can then spend on burritos and pizza. How do you cash out, so to say? Yeah. Um, well, uh, I use Coinbase. It's linked to my uh, my PNC account. I know some banks don't like anything doing having to do with cryptocurrency or Coinbase, but I know uh, PNC is friendly towards it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so say you have your account and you make a post, Joe. When you do a post, boom, 100 bucks. I'm not saying that's likely. I'm not saying it couldn't happen. Say you get 100 bucks, okay? So you get you get half of it and, you know, oh, this is only going to complicate, complicate things. You're going to get half of it in Steam back dollars, and then you're going to get the other half in Steam power. So half of that is automatic, automatically locked away, and the other half is available to you in Steam back dollars. You can, um, there's an account, uh, there's a website called blocktrades.us. You can send it to that from your account. You can send that, uh, that money, uh, you can exchange it, send it to Coinbase and cash out. I, I'm able to do it within a day. If, if I get, uh, if I have Steam, Steam back dollars, any other cryptocurrency, um, except for like Bitcoin and some of those ones, the transactions are terrible on them right now. Uh, but for a lot of the fast transactions, I can, I can cash out and have the money within 24 hours. I say, so it is, it is like, it is like, uh, like Bitcoin where you, you can trade Bitcoin, but you can also cash out and get the, the bit or the U S dollar equivalent of what you have in Bitcoin in your bank account absolutely yeah and and in my case i'm starting uh i basically been preaching the good word of steam it for a long time and a lot of my friends have steam accounts so we can actually transfer steam within our accounts for you know day-to-day -day transactions with friends and stuff you know oh you can yeah. pay each other and it's uh it's it's instantaneous the transactions are are instantaneous so, so it doesn't that's, have that's, the it doesn't have the slowness of transaction like uh like bitcoin and such right no no you, you do a transaction and as fast as you can reload your wallet the, the transaction's done okay um so the next question here is uh is steam it completely uncensored and i would i i would add to this my own portion of this unregulated uh do our by a central authority, I should say. Do we need to worry about horrible things like child porn or the such? Uh, can other users link bad URLs into comments on my Steam it post if I were to make one? It's self-regulated. When you start, you start with a reputation of 5. It's really mm -hmm. easy to go higher than that. You know, 26, 27, 28. As it gets up, you know, just like any game you're going to play, it's going to get more difficult, you know, as you go up in, in rep. Okay. Yeah. People with a lot of Steam power can vote yourself to make it to where it's completely unviewable and uh, they can downvote you to the point where there isn't a single thing you can post that is ever going to be visible by anybody okay they can just they can just downvote you to oblivion okay so it's it's it, everything's based on your reputation so presumably if you are a decent person and post quality stuff and don't post child porn you're going to get rewarded for it versus if you do you're going to be downvoted to the point where basically you get kicked off the island correct yeah, okay. and, and another another component of it is um, not just and the it's not, posting, but it's also, not arbitrarily either. It's it's you have to have enough people do that. Is that right? Well, you know uh, I mean? the more steam power you have, the more weight you can throw around. Yeah, well, yeah, okay, that makes sense because you gain that by by being reputable yep. in a good way. So, or, okay, or in I some cases, you. people just buy the steam to have that that rep. To, to, you you can't buy into your rep, but you can buy into your Steam power, and that's where yeah. uh, you get added value into the platform of people buying in. You know, and, and in that case, is in the future, it's going to be more commercial interest um, outside of just the individual trying to make money on Steam. It. Um, okay. You know, you, you have people that buy in that that uh, uh, shout out you know, uh, something that they want out there. 
well, they have to buy influence to be able to do that. Okay. And that gives value to everybody that owns it. It's not, you know, it's not Zuckerberg, you know, gaining, gaining from that, you know, a third party coming in and paying Zuckerberg for your attention. You know, the value of that is built in. Okay. So let's go ahead and, and, and move on a little bit from the the general overview and talk about more specific things. Like uh, you mentioned DLive. Um, is that like Facebook Live or is it more like Twitch? Or does do people kind of use that uh, interchangeably? It's more like Twitch. Okay. Um, All right. So there's a, there's, there's a lot of people streaming games out there then, I take it. Yeah, uh, that is that is a majority of it. And I, you know, I'm trying to remember the dates. I want to say that... It was roughly December-ish when I when I found out about it, and it was only shortly before then that it even came out. So when I when I went on there, I'd say there's probably an average of like three streamers at a time on there. And uh, Sam, and I, you know, we got on to Steam at about the same time in January 2017, so just over a year ago. And, you know, we took a little bit of a hiatus because the uh, the app wasn't working right. Well, we came back and, and everything was improved. But we found out about DLive and we, we basically stopped, wa- you know, stopped watching TV, um, just started watching DLive videos, you know, and we could we could see the progression that was slowly gaming, 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 gaming. But what I started doing was picking out good talent and uh, I started a... Uh, a weekly streaming schedule uh-huh. and it's not it's not very big uh there's probably uh, seven or eight people on there now but those are people that say okay i stream all the time but i'm gonna stream at this set time for this you know yeah and uh so that's kind of great gaining some traction and uh i'm really excited about bringing more uh more music um uh, more tutorials more how to's maybe guitar lessons um, I just talked to uh, a girl today that's been on Steam it for over a year. She has a really high rep. Uh, she's doing great. Well, she wants to do um, a cooking show. She used to do private uh, uh, or like commercial uh, for businesses and stuff like cooking, cooking for them, you know, and doing doing the whole chef thing. She wants to bring that to D Live. Well, I'm going to put her on the schedule too. Uh, we have talk show, a um, couple talk shows on there. And, uh, you know, we're just trying to get a little bit, kind of highlight some of the different things other than gaming. Um, gotcha. And I want to really turn it more, turn sections of it to where there could be a channel that streams all the time and it has um, uh, uh, channeled content on that specific channel, you know, so you can go to one and it's nothing but music. It's always music streaming, kind of treat it a little bit more like TV. Gotcha. Um, I gotta, I gotta reel you back real quick because we had another question pop up here. Sure. Um, in, in regards to, let me find it here in regards to, you had mentioned something about, um, being able to purchase steam power. Was that right? Yes. Okay. So the question is if a person or I'll just read it straight off. Um, so essentially if I am wealthy enough, my voice on steam, it will have more power because I can buy it. Yes. Yeah, but you know what? Uh, when they do that, it becomes ex- uh, exponentially harder to, to do that, to uh, keep raising the price, um, because the value of everybody's is going to be worth more. You know. Um, oh, so when 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 the uh, when you buy steam power, it raises the the value of everybody else's steam power along with it. Well, as as they need to uh, raise the price to get people to shake out to uh, give them their steam. Okay. You know what I mean. So like you can put you can put a large. You know I want to say I believe the 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 cap the uh, the ass the cap for it the uh, is over a billion dollars. So I mean if somebody wants to come in and the cap is a billion dollars, but they'd have to spend more than that to actually buy all of them. And when you say billion dollars, you mean a billion steam power, right? Um, uh, liquid. Liquid. Li- okay. What's liquid? Um, okay, gotcha. Yeah. The steam power, you're locking that, locking that away, and uh, um, the liquid steam power, or the liquid steam, um, you know, you can buy what's so locked basically, away. Basically, is- steam dollars has a limit of one billion, but the value of the steam dollar can more or less fluctuate just like a normal dollar yeah um there's there's steam back dollars and steam (laughs) 
so like they uh, yeah they can fluctuate um there's not a set amount that's ever going to be made it, it goes by time on how much is created okay so um yeah and, and like for somebody to come in and just buy everything um it's it, like i said it's just going to get harder and harder the prices you know it, it, there's going to hit a point where it's not valuable for them to keep pumping money into it for the yeah. uh, the attention that they're going to get for it yeah so gotcha. so it's got it's got its own like natural way of discouraging that type of act more or less right yeah, I, I, I feel it does. Uh, you know, just basically supply and demand. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Every all the coins out there, not everybody's going to give up. There's there's going to be some people that are like, no, I'm not giving up a single one for any price. Yeah. You know, for that reason to say, hey, nobody, I've been here since the beginning. Nobody's going to take my voice away. And plus, you're never going to get, you're never going to be able to buy enough to even get close to what the the creators of it have. Yeah. I believe in humanity in general, and I think uh, it would it would be pretty close to impossible for anybody to gain that kind of power over the platform. Yeah, because that would involve that would involve other people giving giving it up. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, like that that's kind of its own like negative idea of it is like if someone gains too much power, people can just drop drop you know cut and run, and I mean that's that. Oh, then yeah. you don't have power anymore. It's it's Absolutely. basically useless. Yeah. So yeah, it, it works all on the supply and demand. That makes total sense. So. And it's not in anybody's best interest to undermine the platform like that. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, I'm the largest yeah. stakeholder. I, I have all that influence. Like, why would I do anything to make my, you know, <laughs> 500 million or investment worth, you know what I mean? Like, that's yeah. <laughs> if you got no nobody left yeah I, I got you nobody left to support you then it's basically like a business with no customers <laughs> and, and I believe in humanity and I believe in the platform and I believe the way that they built it oh question uh, does Steemit have an app for phones it does not have an official app and that's kind of the beauty of the decentralization yeah you know I did uh, see that some of There's the newer like apps you're not going to have you know, for, for newer apps that are still working out the bugs, yeah, you can have some little issues here and there, you know, but you have to remember these people are doing it with volunteering. You know what but, I mean? Uh, and people make you, these apps and then they post it on Steemit saying, hey, look, I made this app. And then it'll get a thousand dollars in upvotes and 500 followers that are upvoting everything you post now. If you could recommend mm -hmm. an app to use for Steemit, what app would that be? Um, I don't use a whole lot of them, but uh, I would say eSteam. E Steam, okay. That just seems to be the one that I hear everybody talking about. Most of the people that use it. When I looked, it was more about managing the wallet versus accessing the the different uh, like D Live or D Tube or anything like that. I didn't find anything like that, but that was on that the Apple App Store. So I don't know if it's different um, with uh, Google Play or anything like that. So yeah. So Steemit um, is basically like the internet's monetization of the e -peen. of the of the what uh, yeah, i was making a uh, never mind that may have went over your head oh, oh <laughs> no. e e e the, the e -peen, yeah so yeah. <laughs> oh failure all right okay. I yeah, I was busy reading because we got someone in chat right now trying to trying to brainstorm ways to game the system. <laughs> Let's see here. Okay, I'll I'll do this one last question when it comes to this, and then we got to move on. Um, he says this is a little bit here. Um, <laughs> he says I have no faith in humanity. <laughs> um, he says if I get seven of my friends to create accounts and all we do is upvote, generate content, and collect Steam and then transfer Steam to one central account to boost the central Steam power, and then use that account to cash out since the higher Steam power generates more actual Steam dollars, if I understand correctly. Is that a thing? And if it is, why doesn't everybody do it? And he says, or am I misunderstanding the whole thing? <laughs> you, you, would, you, would make, you would make more money working a minimum wage job than doing that. <laughs> and doing that like 12 yeah. hours a day you would have to do that for 12 hours a day and still not make what you would work in eight hours in a minimum wage job um and actually uh there's there's a lot of we're, we're starting to get like the indian spammers coming through because oh, yeah. a penny, you know a penny over there is worth a lot of money somebody you know people crack on call center guys 
You know, they're yeah. probably making $15 an hour, but they're upper middle class in India making that, you know, so like for them, for them to make seven cents here and there, like that's a lot of money to them, you know, okay. comparatively, that's, that's a lot of money. So like you do get some of that, but it's, it's insignificant to the whole thing. I mean, there are people out there, my cat is playing with my tripod right now. <laughs> Off of it. I was wondering what that was. So uh, yeah, it's it's just one of those things. It's 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 nothing comparatively. I mean, there's people getting seven hundred, eight hundred dollar posts a day. You know. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Um. Uh, let's see here. Let's uh. Let's see. Does anybody have any other other questions related to like the overall like function of Steam, like the different platforms within it? We went over D Live. Um, and DTube, I assume you said it's just like, like YouTube. It's just a place to, uh, post videos and stuff, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, um, is there anything else you wanted to, uh, to add, uh, to the presentation before we I, take our next break? I actually, um, just for clarification, Steam is the coin and Steam uh -huh. it is the platform. Steam okay, it yeah. runs on Steam. <laughs> gotcha yep okay so um also uh really quick i'd like to introduce you to smt smart media tokens what what this is is uh it you can you can build a steam like coin on top you know connected to the steam blockchain it's actually a fork of the steam blockchain you can create a token so if you own a newspaper you can uh you can use that within your your uh um within your your economy of uh of of you of viewers you know say like the white lake beacon you you know the smaller they can use they can have their own coin to where you have to buy coins for advertisement and um if you post on there you can get you can get those coins um you know somebody like somebody would take pictures of a storm and post it on on there you know and they could give them they could pay them in in those coins you know so we could we could literally like we the podcast could go on there and make a a, a basement bucks. dweller currency yeah two yes. bucks yes absolutely <laughs> Okay, yeah. that, that that's that is our new goal. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's awesome. All right, then uh, we'll be right back here in a moment, and uh, we're gonna finish out the night, um, kind of going over more in depth what cryptocurrency is. I mean, we've already kind of covered a lot of it, so uh, maybe this will be a continuation of what we've done. But uh, yeah, so stick with us, and we will be back again momentarily. Do you like role playing games? How about podcasts? How about a podcast about a role-playing game? Check out our friends at Tomorrow's End, a podcast that follows a role-playing group as they navigate through a post-apocalyptic wasteland. All right, enough fucking words. Here's the trailer. How did humanity get here? I just can't remember. The rest of the world didn't know why the end had come. They'd heard on the radio about an attack on the states by either Russia or China over at Dwindling Resources. What we knew was that the world was going to end. And a crazy man named Maro had a plan to save the world. Many teams were frozen in vaults deep underground, safely tucked away from all the bombs and nukes flying, and the asteroid that would finally end everything. They were supposed to wake up 25 years later and help pick up the pieces. But something went wrong. And everyone woke up a lot later. If they woke up at all. Cultists, criminals, madmen. They'd been living and thriving through the radiation and destruction the entire time. Some good people also survived. They held on to hope by spreading stories. Stories about tomorrow's end. body's ready <laughs> thanks tucci for bringing us back in with that statement um, <laughs> we are uh we are back with eric still and uh we're going to go over a little bit more of the same we've already kind of covered a lot of uh of what cryptocurrency is and how it works but uh we're going to focus more on just cryptocurrency as opposed to uh steam it uh uh steam it in general so um so 
Eric, I sent you questions and I've completely forgot to pull them up. Do you have them in front of you? I can pull. Mm, them. I can wow, pull them. the uh, I can pull the them prepared up quick, Eric so. has arrived. Okay. What? Oh, yes, I, I just, I'll, I'm gonna pull them up too. Hey man, I'm not running out of a van anymore for podcast. Uh, I got, <laughs> that's know, all right. Office space. Uh, Ethan was in a. Uh, a uh, uh, gas station parking lot for our first episode. So <laughs> no, 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 no. Let's get this right. I was in a Amish store parking lot. Oh, that's lot. even better. The Amish had <laughs> the Amish had better Wi-Fi than you did. <laughs> <laughs> that really sets it into perspective. Uh, I know it? you're living in the void. Okay. No, 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 no. Were they Mennonites? Because I mean, I can understand why they might have better Wi-Fi. Ah, uh, you silly fools. I was just using my 4G because I didn't have Wi-Fi at home. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. All right. I found Amish Wi-Fi. There. Come on. Come on. <laughs> oh, I was excited. They're yeah, evolving. That's what I was thinking. A big antenna stuck on the back of a horse running around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's how you get coverage there. By the way, hello, everyone, on uh, DLive, right? That's what we're streaming on right now. Yeah. yeah. Yep. You got uh, at least a handful of people watching right now. Well, that's oh, like yeah. that's like oh, more, shit. more people than go. what listen to listen to our show. <laughs> so. Rip. We, uh, hey man, we're gonna get us. guys on Steam it, and uh, we'll get basement the basement dwellers out there, man, and uh, help you guys get that promoted and and out there and. If you guys want to split off and do streaming, I'll help you, you know, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you know how to stream. So, I mean, there's not going to be a whole lot I can teach you, but, you know, just maybe as far as uh, some strategery, strategery as far as doing. Gotcha. Oh. Um, so my first question regarding cryptocurrency is, <laughs> maybe we've already answered this one, but what is cryptocurrency and what makes it different from regular currency? There's going to be really basic bitch questions. So, uh, no, that's. Yeah, that's fine because I'm just gonna have basic bitch answers for some of them too. So we are on the same page, okay, man. The, uh, the dictionary definition is a digital currency in which encryption techniques are used to regulate the generation of units of currency and verify the transfer of funds operating independently of a central bank. Okay, boom. <laughs> All right. So uh, and then and you have people that are running servers to verify those transactions. They basically act, uh, act like bookkeepers, keeping. You know, keeping a paper trail. You had mentioned that before, yeah. So, next question is, uh, what is blockchain technology and how does cryptocurrency utilize it? We went through it a little bit, right? But uh, basically, yeah. just an an open ledger uh, transactions that anybody can access. It's not Visa. It's not locked away. the The transaction fees are the people actually keeping the the, the uh, transactions going by running the servers. Uh -huh. And uh, you know, a paper trail, basically. Okay. Every you know every previous one, you know every every entry depends on the previous ones to complete it. Okay. The math has to add up. You know. So again, to reiterate, it's kind of like the way to verify transactions and make sure that they're legitimate. Like you have, you have the amount of, uh, for example, Bitcoin. We'll use Bitcoin as the example because that's probably the most well-known one. Um, but you have the amount of Bitcoin that you were trying to exchange for something else. Like that's what that the blockchain is for, and it's. If I got this correctly, my, my own understanding is that it runs a complex mathematical equation in order to figure that out, or is that how you mine? I don't remember. The uh, the mining is uh, each block. Each block of information holds all the transactions, and as you're filling the block with, as the miners are mining, they're filling the block with transactions. They're also guessing at a number. And they're guessing and guessing and guessing. They're trying to figure out this mathematical equation, and they're guessing, they're guessing, they're guessing. And then eventually, uh, one of the miners gets it and announces it that he got it, and then they all move on to the next block. Okay. So when we talk about mining, that is generating the cryptocurrency, right? Correct. Like, cr like you mine Bitcoin, and when you mine a Bitcoin, you create a Bitcoin? Correct. Yeah. And if, if most, you know, different, different cryptocurrencies are going to be different depending on the emissions and the difficulty, the block difficulty, mm -hmm. um, you know, as the, as, as, uh, you know, most, most have an increasing, uh, increasing block difficulty 
for each one so so they don't happen as fast okay so um yeah they uh the the actual server that finds you know in this case a bitcoin gets it but now the trans the uh the block the blocks are so difficult uh there's not necessarily one server that's going to find it a lot of times they do a uh um a community uh community mining so that everybody will will contribute their cp or you know their their processing power and then uh, depending on how many how much information you transmitted when they do find it in that group it's almost like sharing the lot with uh at work yeah you know that you buy 40 lottery tickets and if any of the 40 win it you all split it you know and, and that's kind of how a lot of people are mining now so when when we talk about using computers for mining again from my understanding is you have to have the computing or the processing power necessary to be able to run the calculations against the blockchain in order to find <laughs> find the bitcoin i guess <laughs> yeah 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 there's there's um i'm i'm not tech li- technically savvy enough to be able to tell you, okay, this rig mines this kind of. Oh no, no, no! I'm that. I'm just talking in in general. No. Just but, to, to give you a general idea, like different coins have different processes, different ways of going about it, different ways of doing. It. Some you're able to mine on a phone. It's okay. never going to be profitable to mine on a, phone, but that's just to help secure the network. So, uh, you if you wanted to run it off your laptop, it's not advisable, you know, unless you like keep it down to a certain percentage and you don't overwork it at all Mm -hmm. you know there there are coins that are easier to to mine and you can mine it with a desktop um or like i said even a phone it's just not profitable at that point but um yeah i mean now it's like with bitcoin it's just you can't you have to have a rig you can't just throw a couple hundred at it and mine bitcoin well, Bitcoin is is the big one, and that is uh, gaining a lot of, uh, or has gained a lot of national coverage as of late. Um, without, I guess I can't be too specific in that regard. But uh, what's your what's your thought on um, the the current the current news with Bitcoin? Like it seems like it seems like everyone's freaking out about it because yeah, it, it's, hear it's about the success from a, from a low of like I'm sorry. And so, well, I was to say like because. It has basically become mainstream for the most part, and yeah, unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> and no, uh, I, yeah. Go ahead. Well, um, it's I believe it hit like seven thousand. Last per, I looked, it's about Bitcoin? eleven thousand, eleven and a half thousand now. Uh, it was at a high of nineteen thousand, twenty thousand, depending on what source you get from. And that's per Bitcoin, yeah. right? That's U.S. dollars. Yeah. Per Bitcoin, so nineteen thousand yeah. U.S. dollars per Bitcoin mined. Correct. Yep. Jesus <laughs> Christ! And each Bitcoin is actually broken down into smaller pieces. You don't. Yeah, you can. If you own you a Bitcoin, can, then that's a pretty big deal, like a full Bitcoin. Yeah, you're. It's scalable. So as the price goes goes up, um, scalable to where you can break it up. And, okay. Uh, as much as you want, it does get to a point where it's like so inconsequential. It's just dust, and there's part of the part of the mining and stuff that kind of like chews at the dust. If that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Well, in uh, in in uh, gamer nerd terms, I guess that's that's pretty similar to breaking down a platinum piece into gold, silver, uh, copper, and whatever else. Um, yeah, I don't know if you get that reference, but <laughs> I don't. Know. <laughs> no, that's all right. <laughs> You're not really much of a a, a nerdy person, are you? <laughs> I, I don't consider myself to be. I have certain certain like games and processes and things that like kind of tickle my brain just right to where I feel a little nerdy, but. You're more of no. a you're more of a political and economic nerd, which I am too. But that's <laughs> yeah. No. I, I I enjoy. I did really well in my economics class in college because I actually like looked forward to reading the book. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did that too. But uh, my uh, well, again, I don't want to get too political here. But <laughs> my my economics book in my college class was written by Paul Krugman, so <laughs> oh, I, did, I didn't really goodness. have a good time with that one. So, <laughs> um, but anyway, 
Uh, let's see here. We've got a question. Still don't understand why mining happens except to generate cryptocurrency. Yeah, there, there's um, some some coins that do it differently. Uh, I, I'm not sure. Maybe he said, you know, it doesn't. It, it may seem redundant or use, you know, useless to do it like that. Um, but basically, you're you need it to uh, keep the blockchain running, yeah. where people can do transactions. So there has to be a network of computers running to handle it, you know, and that's. That that the reward is kind of like the little game. Keep keep have people keep the networks on. Okay, so basically it's like generating power for the blockchain, but you get re- you have the possibility of getting rewarded for contributing. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. You you're helping the transactions flow, so you get re- yeah. You get you have the opportunity at, at getting a, a whole Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be better off investing in like a Bitcoin or a crypto than you would be trying to mine it, though, wouldn't you? Uh, I really say reserve if if you don't know, either learn or don't mine. You know, I I am not a technically savvy computer person. Yeah. I have a hard time fumbling through that and really understanding what's going on. I'm getting better. What I what I understand of the mining. Yeah, you need the the high power computers, and they're talking like tons of kilowatt power now. Like you actually have to be lucrative enough at it to pay your electric bill. Yeah, yeah. To cover now, the there's, cost there's, of mining, there's over thirteen hundred coins out there. Over thirteen hundred. So that everyone does it differently, and everybody will find it. You can do a profitability calculator, to see if it's even worth it. Some people like to do it just. No, doing it as an investment, I think it might be undervalued coin, and you know they're so they're going to mine a bunch of it and hold on to it and then mine another coin. Um, you know, personally, I'm diversified. I got I got some of my crypto I sold. Um, I own part of a mining rig. Um, you know, I profited from it. I got into crypto about two years ago. I profited to you know buy part of a mining rig, and I you know I'm diversified in some other things too. You know through through crypto so uh but me personally i wouldn't mind but i know people that do and have the ability to do that so i trust them and uh you know entrusted them with part of my cryptocurrency in exchange for future payouts ideally <laughs> okay and uh eric another question here um regarding um steam as the the cryptocurrency um can you can you mine that? I don't know. I don't remember if you said you could. Like, are you able to just hook up? Well, the, the witnesses handle it, but yeah. uh, I believe you actually can uh, can run a node and mine it. Well, there's there's your answer, Joe. Um, so let's see here, and um, I am going to get to uh, a little bit about um, investing in uh, cryptocurrency. So we'll, we'll hold off on that for a second. Um, the next question is, uh, what advantages? does cryptocurrency have over other types of uh, currency like say the US dollar or um, I don't know the any like the the pound or whatever the hell they use in the EU nowadays I don't remember I don't know <laughs> but, you know what I mean like what what does it hold over uh, uh, cur- currencies that we actually use in everyday transactions regulated yeah yeah there we go <laughs> <laughs> and I guess that that I guess that kind of answers it too. It's it's unregulated for the most part, right? Yeah. So it's yeah. more it's more subject to it's more subject to the forces of supply and demand and basic economics because there's no other obstacles for it to uh, have to work around. Am I right with that? R- right. And, Sorry, and, I'm know, injecting. I'm injecting a little little bias into that, I guess. But uh, no, that's fine. There's, there's, you know, the, the one of the largest arguments against crypto is, um, you know, up and down, up and down, up and down, right? Yeah. Like there's no stability. Bubbles um, and bursts. Bubbles and bursts. Yep. Yeah, and and you have to understand as a platform, it's still highly speculative. The people getting into crypto, there, there's not a there's not an established framework that is uh, really being relied on yeah. for uh, for the crypto. Yeah. I, for me, the advantages for me, it's it's 
more of a philosophic one for decentralization. I support the cause and that's why I invested in it two years ago. Okay. I understand what it could represent and I invested money that I was willing to lose. And lucky lucky for me and a lot of others, we didn't lose. Now, I'm not I'm, I'm rich by any stretch of the imagination. I had a very good ROI on my list. So ROI is return of investment for those wondering. <laughs> Yes, sir. <laughs> Do you oh, want to be uh, my crypto daddy? <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay with that. Like I yeah. said, just talk to me afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so I guess that that leads into the last question here. Um, what is the best way to get started with investing in, in cryptocurrency? What would you recommend and uh, how would you go about it? I guess and you can also toss in some resources in order to, um, like you can point people towards if they want to read more about it. Yeah, um, I would say if you are interested in it, you've probably done a little bit of reading. I would say keep reading. Just just soak up as much knowledge as you can. And it, some stuff is going to be more intuitive for you than others. I know for me, I had to brute force my way through everything. You know, like, okay, I don't understand this, but I'm going to bang my head against the screen and figure it out. You know, and eventually it worked out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I would just say read and read. You know, figure out what you're going to do. I mean, honestly, the first, if somebody asked me what was the first thing to do if I want to invest in crypto, I'd say don't, don't, don't invest, <laughs> invest your time into getting information. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, but let's, let's say, let's say that you have, you have read as far as like how, um, how the whole system works and kind and a little bit of what to expect. Cause you can't really can't really expect an economic system to go one way or the other you can make predictions but that doesn't always ring true but let's say you've done your research what which cryptocurrency would you suggest would be the safest bet for those first starting off like an individual like an individual coin you're asking me. so you're like asking yeah, like, me like, for like because i know there's there's bitcoin and then uh, i know there's some other ones that are uh ether like so, yeah all yes that. Just to clarify, you're asking me for investment advice. <laughs> sure. Yes. Well, not 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 officially. I'm just saying, like, what no, no, in, yeah. in, in your experience, in your experience, and what you know, because you've yeah. been, you've been in this world, uh, been in the crypto world for uh, longer than than uh, obviously we have. But uh, um, as far as the trends in the market and like how stable mm -hmm. it is and everything like that, like, what would you recommend? You know what I mean? Because the last thing a person wants to do is they want to get excited about investing in cryptocurrency. And then, you know, it's kind of like going to the slot machines and putting in, you know, your your last $5 bill and having it gone in one pull. You know what I mean? Like what what is their best yeah. bet to like a low a low risk, a low risk investment, I guess. Okay. I don't want to sound like a fanboy. <laughs> steam it or steam sorry <laughs> but but honestly Ed, when i whenever i look at the charts steam uh tends to be the most stable out of the ones i keep an eye on okay um i do, honestly do would think not that, invest in it do you think that's I'm because sorry? I'm sorry real quick do you think that is because it's relatively unknown like it hasn't garnered the attention that would destabilize it that i think that's a fair point um but also there's you know, there, like I said, there's 1,300 coins. <laughs> you know, it, there's plenty to just, you know, throw something up against the wall. And I, I just think that there's people who watch the price who say, you know, they're they're doing a cost benefit analysis on the price, mm -hmm. and uh, they're, you know, they're selling high, buying low. I think you have a healthy, a healthy uh, liquidity to the to the coin, to where there's not very many. Uh, corrections to the coin itself and a lot of the a lot of the instability is actually linked to bitcoin it doesn't go up as much you know it it it, it kind of evens out with with uh with bitcoin so if bitcoin is dropping it seems like it doesn't drop as much um sometimes it'll even go against bitcoin so if bitcoin goes down people know the value of the coin itself so the price of steam against bitcoin actually go up um, because people say, hey, this coin is worth five dollars, even if Bitcoin goes down, this coin is still worth five, you know, this this coin is still worth four dollars. So it's you know, people will buy it up to that price if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um but it, it, the bottom line is you're in a speculative market. 
high risk, high reward. We yeah. saw the correction in January. There's a correction in December, and there's always a correction at the end of January for the Chinese New Year. Basically, people take uh, people take out their profits the same way that people take out their profits here in America to pay for Christmas. Yeah. When when you talk about when you talk about correction, you're talking about like a crash or like a bubble burst, right? Yeah. Any anything that goes against the trend. Yeah. You know, um, if it goes up yeah. too high too fast, you know, there's going to be a correction and then it's going to create a new floor and stabilize ideally. Mm-hmm. So, um, and as far as safe, I, I honestly, I, I like steam as a, as an investment. Um, I like Bitcoin cash. Bitcoin cash is a fork off of Bitcoin. I think they made improvements to the coin itself. And I think Bitcoin cash is a more functional coin than Bitcoin is. Bitcoin is only at this point a store of value. It's the transaction fees astronomical. The transaction times are unreasonably unnecessary. Yeah. So, would you say that that uh, Bitcoin is more about strictly for investing, knowing that you can pull U.S. currency out of it? You know what I mean? Yeah, it's it's a lot easier to it's a lot easier a lot of different coins because there's they almost always have a pair with Bitcoin. Okay. I got to you. trade with. And uh, I remember I remember when Bitcoin wasn't the only one in it. It was like Ethereum. It was like, holy cow, you can trade with Ethereum now. There's an, an Ethereum market now. Yeah. You know, so um, I like Ethereum a lot. I actually like Ethereum Classic better. I think Ethereum is a good store of value, but I like I, I personally like Classic better. So when it comes to the blockchain, are there several different blockchains depending on the currency or do they all run on yeah. one? They are. Okay. Yeah. 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 No, so there, there's a lot of different blockchains and there's a lot of, a lot of coins that forked off of Bitcoin that, uh, you know, runs on the Bitcoin blockchain. And there's a bunch of them that run on the Ethereum blockchain. I don't know enough about at this point because I've been out of the game for almost a year. Uh-huh. There's so many new things that happened in the last year and I'm just trying to play catch up. Gotcha. You know, okay. SMTs being one of them, smart media tokens. All right. Um, but uh, let me let me kind of finish my list real quick. Oh yeah, uh, go for it. Sorry. Uh, like I said, I like Bitcoin Cash more than I like Bitcoin. Um, I like Monero. M O N E R O. It's uh, it's the most um, it's the highest rated privacy coin. Monero. It's it's to to some elite, it's the only privacy coin. So whenever you see like people talk about regulating and making something illegal, you see a little bump in Monero because people put a little bit of money in Monero. Um, Litecoin, Litecoin is super fast transactions and that's how I exchange all my, uh, whenever I'm cashing out, uh, I always I always exchange it with Litecoin and then I send Litecoin to my Coinbase and then cash out my Litecoin. So for transactions, Litecoin is really good. Um, I mean, that's my quick run through. Of, of the ones I like. There's a lot of them though. Mm-hmm. There's a lot that I just have, you know, a little bit of chicken scratch here and there. And, and all right. Um, does anybody have any more questions for Eric before we, uh, I think, I think I've run out of, uh, run out of the questions that I've written at least. So, uh, I think we, we pretty much, we pretty much covered a lot of this section in the last section. So those of you listening yeah, to yeah. the, uh, <laughs> those of you listening to the edited cut together version are probably might be confused. So, <laughs> Oh yeah, and uh, yeah, the comments here in in uh, Discord say I'm just gonna go ahead and start a life of crime <laughs> now. Um, yeah, you know, nuclear technology brought the nuclear bomb, okay? But you know, what else did it bring? Um, I mean, people were scared of the light bulb, you know. <laughs> I know. People were scared of the light bulb. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to yeah. like, I don't want to get down on people that are naysayers. I think that is healthy. Uh-huh. I've done my research. I know what I'm in for. I'm fully comfortable with the consequences. Yeah. I'm I'm good. Yeah. I'm cool. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, yeah. I I could lose all my crypto right now and I would still be up. So I'm not really concerned. <laughs> all right. Any uh, any questions from, from anyone else here? No, I'm pretty satisfied. Good. All right. So Eric, do you want to uh plug anything from your uh your Steam it or anything like that while you're on here? But as yeah, far as like how, how people, it, yeah, but, um, as far as like how people can find you and everything. Yeah, I uh, my uh, my account name is at 
Eric Wilson, no spaces, all lowercase. And uh, to find any account on Steemit, all you have to do is go to steemit.com slash at and then put whatever screen name. And that's how you find all, you know, whoever screen name. Okay. So that's mine. I do, uh, I've been doing a lot of deep streaming lately. Uh, try to, you know, I try to just be valuable to the community of, of what I feel would be valuable. And I try to put that out there. Uh, I'm really working on my DLive 24 hour schedule of trying to get uh, channeled content to a 24 hour stream. Mm-hmm. Um, that's my, my big goal, my big plan right now of really what I've been working on. So I'd say if, um, if anybody joins Steam, uh, please shoot me a message on Discord. I have my, my Discord server link on the top of my blog. Click on that link. You're in my server. You can, you can post server or you can private message me from there. If you ever have any questions on Steam and how something works, I mean, there is a learning curve. And I have no, no problem you know, walking you through whatever you need to be walked through. Um, I enjoy doing that. I enjoy helping people you know, get, their, get their legs from underneath them on the platform and taking off and running. Yeah, and man. finding their you know finding their niche so uh um real quick a, a question question was asked in chat again um is uh d live uh obs or or what is it it's uh is d live OBS, obs friendly, friendly as far as streaming goes yes it is okay primarily yeah. yes yeah. yes that's actually the preferred preferred uh program to use obs so essentially what what all you need from from D Live is their their streaming key, and then you can plug that into whatever streaming software you choose to use, and then you'll stream yeah. to D Live, right? Yeah, yeah, and I'd be happy to do like a tutorial episode too if you guys ever want to do anything like that. But um, basically, there's uh, one of the things that was built on top of the Steam platform was Steam Connect, and that connects the uh, different platforms together to the Steam blockchain. So what you do is when you get an account, you go to your wallet, you click on uh, permissions, and you're going to have a posting key. You have to click the button to show your posting key, copy that, and then that's your password on Steam Connect. That connects you to DTube, DLive, Utopian, um, um, DSound, all those other platforms that run off the Steam, uh, Steam blockchain. To all of them. Yeah. Can you stream to all of them simultaneously? I mean, I know that would probably be a lot of. Well, uh, D Live's just the streaming. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know okay. what I mean? Oh, so gotcha. Like, gotcha. Every you know, every time you do a D Live post, you're making a uh, a Steam it post. Oh, um, I, I got gotcha. you. That you're talking about all just a key that enables you to post. Period. Yeah. yeah okay. So so for the that you go into the posting key, you click on show, you copy that, and that's your Steam your Steam Connect password and that's going to link you to all the other stuff so and then yeah when you're in d live you make a post um and part of the process is copying and pasting the uh, stream key information to your obs yeah yep it I, it sounds pretty similar to how you set up um like twitch you know with the- like literally i brute force everything i wish <laughs> i was recording everything because it would make for an awesome and hilarious and sad highlight reel it was pathetic <laughs> at times uh but look at me now how about that yeah joe asks so when is decon i don't know exactly what he means by that like <laughs> like the uh oh decentralized convention i don't know <laughs> decon <laughs> like oh the convention there, there we go there, i mean you know you're gonna get in there and you're gonna be like holy cow they're such a uh, um a subculture yeah, in Steam, a good subculture. Because let me let me so, remind you, people can downvote you. Yeah. There's a different attitude. It's kind of like the same attitude of, you know, maybe uh, how you might be a little bit like to somebody if you know they have a gun in their pocket kind of deal. Uh huh. You know, they can downvote you. So there's no benefit in being a troll on there. You know, yeah. there's no. You're not. People aren't encouraging that behavior. You know, the proper behavior of social etiquette. Is welcome there, and that's what's rewarded. Is you know, just if an you episode go around, of Black Mirror. What about Black? Mirror? Wasn't that an episode of Black Mirror? Like no, the social you're, you're credit. And the- yeah, you're you're thinking something else. No, man, it ain't like that. No, <laughs> like that. I had maybe. <laughs> I don't Kinda, know. No. Sort of no. <laughs> no, you know, I mean it's, it's definitely not like they're they're. 
downvoting is a big deal. Like you don't just do it haphazardly. Everything's visible. Everything's trackable. Everything you do, there's a paper trail. So you can't say, "Oh, I didn't do that." People can like point you to the right, the exact block transaction. Oh, actually, you did. It's a blockchain. So you know? presumably, if you went in there to be an asshole and you downvoted everything, people would be like, "Eh, this guy," like. They'd be, you'd be, you'd be, be uh, snuffed out pretty quickly, wouldn't you? I I would believe so, yeah. yeah. And if not quickly, eventually. Yeah. You you will be, uh, yeah, you yeah. will be snuffed out. So would you say, as far as um, I'm gonna I'm gonna assume some things here. Would you say that the community in um, Steemit is uh, very politically charged and very against? You see, everything is about decentralization. Everything is um, kind of about, uh, I don't want to say non self censorship and uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Um, Beautifully ordered anarchy. <laughs> sure, I guess. Um, but you know, like the whole, the whole, the whole reason to create a a, uh, a like a, a parallel um, social media. Is because obviously because you're happy with you're not you're sorry you're unhappy with the current one and and I correct in assuming that the people here are mostly unhappy with with uh, the like the because I know Facebook just introduced a lot of algorithms that seemingly kind of steer it back to its original intention of being a place to to interact with your friends and family but they're making it harder for businesses to advertise on there through their algorithm algorithms they already make it really hard for people to see pages that they like um yeah. unless unless they unless they take some extra steps to you know uh, like with Backdoor Facebook, it <laughs> but, yeah, or, or like you know you have to go up and you have to say uh i want to see this first or whatever you know so would you would you say that the, most people there are kind of disillusioned with the with 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 facebook and they're a little more are they pretty p- politically charged? You're you you create your bubble. Yeah. You you go and seek the kinds of people that you want to hear about. If if uh, like I told I told you earlier, Wes, you know I follow a lot of homesteading stuff, a lot of gardening stuff. Yeah. Um, I just don't follow. I I follow people that may have political posts once in a while. But it's not one of those, I'm going to smack out 30 words, smack the hornet's nest, and, and run away. You know, you don't get that nearly as much. Um, and, and I just, I choose my bubble. Yeah. I choose the bubble of the of the content that I want to see. Mm-hmm. And for me, Steemit is a relief and a break from all that political stuff. Um, and you can, you, can, you can be as in-depth in it as you want. Um, obviously there's, there's a group of like-minded people that have a general, leave me the hell alone. I'm just doing my thing attitude. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of people on there that have that attitude that just don't even want to talk politics. They just have that attitude and that's what brought them there. But Mm -hmm. you know, that's not the reason they're staying around, you know, and they don't, there's, there's a lot of people that just don't like talking politics. I mean, there is that kind of the general feeling of, um, yeah, it's a platform to where you can talk politics, but it's, you know, we're in polite company here, so, you know, that's, yeah. well, that's you know, not for here. The 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 difference being that the community, the community will censor you, <laughs> not just yeah. one person in control of a company, you know? <laughs> like, if people, right. like, yeah, like, essentially, it's like a, a huge market force. Like, the more people that dislike what you're saying, you're going to find you're going to you're going to know you can't just say it and get away with it as opposed to you know Mark Zuckerberg saying hey because I believe this I'm not going to allow this on my site which again he has every right to do but we're not talking about that <laughs> so um, um I do have one last question actually that just popped up into my mind um so you, you talked a little bit about upvoting and downvoting when it comes to upvoting, when you upvote somebody, do you give them some of your steam? Is that how that works? Good, good question. Good question. I actually, I'm glad you asked that. Because a, a large portion of uh, the steam power is your voting power. It makes sense that if you gave your vote to everybody, your vote is that much, right? I mean, that's okay. logical. Um, yeah. So you, there's there's exact numbers to it, and I'm gonna wing it. Um, basically, you get roughly. 
20 votes an hour or 20 20 votes a day um roughly you you every vote takes up like one percent of your voting power and every hour two percent regenerates so say say your votes are up votes at 100 percent are worth 10 cents you know it's roughly nine cents at 90 percent it's roughly eight cents at 80 percent you know and so most people like to stay between 80 and 100 percent they don't like getting that low so um, it kind of it kind of keeps you from having like a really drunk night and just upvoting everything and losing all your steam power. Yeah, you, you well you don't lose your steam powder but you're voting Yeah, yeah, I know your point. Um yeah, you could you could use up all your voting power in a night for sure and it would take you like three days to get it back. Okay. Um and that's that obviously adds more value to every upvote, right? Because people can't just hand them out to everybody. They have yeah. to be picky. And that, sure. that helps bring the value to the upvotes. Okay. Okay. All right. So um, before we wrap things up, because we are at the end of the show, um, can you, again, we'll bring it back to Steam it here. Um, can you just give a quick rundown as far as what you need to do to create an account? Create an, an account. Create an account. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Steamit.com, you, you register with a phone number. Um, you have to verify your email, and then I believe there you have to do a uh um you get an sms message for a verification code or something and then uh from there you uh you turn all that in and um it can take a day or two usually it's about three or four it's and then once you do that you're going to get um ma your master keys do not lose these codes do not lose them if you lose them you can't get your account back so do not lose them. So email them to an email address. Put it in a in a hardwired wallet. Um, you know, uh, uh, back up. I hesitate up, to up. say write it. I hesitate to say write it down because I believe it's case sensitive. And I just feel that if you wrote it down, you're really kind of rolling the dice. Okay. Um, yeah, I uh, when I when I registered, it did take. I think it was. I think it was four days. For my email to appear, and what he's talking about with these master keys, these are like your your uh, your your passwords that have been given to you. Like you need those in order to access your account because you're dealing with with money. So it, you know, treat it seriously. Treat it like it's your your key to your lockbox that holds your life savings in it. <laughs> I mean, it, you know, yeah. it, obviously it, it's the, the scale is is incorrect with that, but yeah, it's it's a. Uh, Eric did stress the importance of me to to back up my uh, my passwords, and they are not easily remember or remember no like at all no memorable. So I, so I should so I should get them tattooed to my chest. I guess not a bad <laughs> idea. <laughs> but but yeah, maybe um, somewhere more private. Yeah. Uh, didn't they say there's no password regeneration either? Like you can't request a new one. Correct. I believe if you have your master key can change it but you can't i i heard there's a retrieval way with the phone or something but it's i uh probably i don't not, know man i'm not relying on user friendly. <laughs> i don't care because i'm not losing it <laughs> yeah i hear you what would you do like the first the first thing you get on steam it where would you direct people to go first well I, I would say particularly don't be in a hurry to post because you don't have any followers so there's no point in posting anything that nobody's going to see um, I'd say first things first is start searching for, um, st start searching under tags. Maybe if you're into photography, start going in the, t in the, in the tag for photography, start finding people that post stuff that you'd like to see, interact with them, upvote them, make a comment saying, Hey, I'm new to steam it. Uh, I really like your photos. Um, you know, don't beg for follows or upvotes or anything, but just say, hey, Friend but just request, say, hey you know, mess with the people like Dusty and it's a social media site. So be social, you yeah. know, find people that are similar, similar interests to you or things that you can appreciate, things that you would value, um, upvote their stuff, leave a comment, let them know that you've, you're following them and you upvoted them. You're new to steam it. And, you know, hey, you're one of my first follows or something like that, you know, mm hmm. Um, interact with people and and try to make a point of of going under like the new tab and stuff like that. So it, you know you're gonna interact. Um, you're gonna you're gonna start getting some some people following you. You're gonna start following some people. You're gonna start seeing more stuff in the timeline. 
we're going to re-steam stuff, and you're going to say, hey, you know, I like that. I'm going to follow them too. And then once you kind of get your legs underneath you, um, start uh, start considering what you want to what why you want to be on Steam, what you want to do, what you want your role to be like. You know, what are your are you going to are you going to blog? about interests are you going to be on d live are you gonna are you gonna mostly do music on d sound um ethan's mixing a drink again i can hear <laughs> <laughs> you know just just try to find find how you want to fit in the steam it and then from there you're going to do an inter introduce yourself post your first tag is going to be introduce yourself mm -hmm. and one word all lowercase and uh, you just have an introduction post. And the more time and thought that you put into that post, um, it's gonna show good photos. Whatever photo you upload, your first photo on the top of the blog is gonna be the main thumbnail when people are scrolling through. Mm -hmm. So, you know, keep that in mind. You want the most visibly appealing first image to pop out there. You know, just introduce yourself to the community. And hopefully by then you might have 20 30 40 50 followers and uh also there i know i do it i like to go to the uh to the introduce yourself uh tags you know once a day once every other day and try to pick out somebody that's interesting to me and just kind of throw them a random up vote in a comment let them know i'm following you know i try to I try to find people every day or, or every other day so yeah, it's a social media site. Be social. If you're coming for the rewards. You're not. You're not going to do well. But if you hone your craft and you're really, uh, really, really like the platform and and uh, you play the game and you know you'll be fine. And it, it's a great, great site just to, uh, for you guys. You know, a cross promotional thing too. Well, well, dude. First off, I want to say uh, thanks for coming on our show and uh, thanks for explaining all of this. This is probably our most informational episode we've ever had. Um, it's oh, yeah. com completely different than uh, what, we, uh, what we're used to. Um, so those of you listening to us on, uh, on DLive, on uh, Eric's stream right now, um, thanks for joining us. And uh, hopefully if you guys are interested in uh, anything nerd culture, we do uh, gaming, um, uh, we do anime and talk about anime. We talk about TV shows, movies, uh, anything nerd culture related. We are trying to get around to. And, uh, as we mentioned in the beginning of our show, um, we, we are just now getting into brewing beer too. So if you're into brewing beer and want to share some tips with us, um, that'd be great too. We will, we will be on steam it eventually. Um, we have a I, I, four days, right? I should say yeah I have a hard time keeping up with with everything as it is so uh, um, maybe well let I, me be your guru bro let me be <laughs> right. your guy that holds um, your hand and brings you into the steam at promised land <laughs> alright um, so yeah everyone listening thank you for joining us and uh, hope to see you next time yeah don't forget to smash <laughs> that up dude yeah, um, yeah. The, the don't forget to smash that up vote that, that, that up dude the that up dude. vote the up dude the up <laughs> alright good night everybody thank you for listening to the basement dwellers podcast join us next time as we have ourselves a board game extravaganza